Today, we will be upgrading our 30-year-old Stratocaster copy with brand new genuine Fender parts, which we sell here at anthillmusic.com. The links to all the individual products are listed in the description of this video. We recommend watching this all the way through before starting your project as we face unique challenges that may or may not pertain to your project. The bridge that is currently on the guitar is old and of cheap quality. As you can see here, the mounting holes are worn, the mounting screws are rusted, and the adjustment screws on the individual saddles are so rusty that they can't even be adjusted. So we will be switching it out with a brand new Fender Original Mexican Standard Strat Tremolo Bridge. We carry just the saddles individually or in sets of six if that is the only thing that you need to change. We start by loosening the strings with our peg winder. Cut the strings down by the pickups with the wire cutters. Unwind the strings off the tuners. Pull the ball end of the string out through the saddles and out of the bottom of the bridge block. If they get stuck, you can use another string and try to push them through. We will be switching to bullet end strings which are made for these type of bridges and will not get stuck. Once the strings are off, we turn the guitar over and remove the springs. Start by releasing some tension on the springs by loosening the claw. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, take one turn at a time to each screw. As you can see, the springs are no longer stretched out, which helps you from not losing an eyeball when you take the springs out. Remove all the springs and flip the guitar back over. Unscrew and remove all mounting screws, then remove the old bridge. We take our new fender bridge and put it in the place of the old one. We discover that the mounting screw holes do not line up with the holes on the new bridge. Not a problem, we have a solution. We need to create more room on the back end of the routing hole where the block slides into. So we use a convex file and file it down carefully a little at a time and check the fit. Finally, the bridge is aligned with a row of holes. But now we find that the mounting screw hole spacing is too wide. This means we have to fill in the holes and drill new holes for our new fender bridge. Pour a little bit of wood glue onto an old newspaper or other disposable service and take a pointed end toothpick and roll it in the glue. Remove the axis and push the pointed end down the mounting screw hole as far as it can go. Break off the rest of the toothpick and repeat for all holes. If you have a lot of extra wiggle room with just one toothpick, take the pointed end of another toothpick and wedge it into the same hole. You want this fill job to be as tight as possible. Once you've finished this step, take a damp paper towel and wipe away excess glue. Using your wire cutters, clip off any wood that is sticking out of the surface. Then let the glue dry overnight. After the wood glue dries, take some super glue and put a small drop over each hole. This is an extra measure to fill in any small cracks or crevices. Once that is dry, we take fine grit sandpaper to gently smooth out the surface. We should know that we aren't too concerned about the finish on this particular guitar, but you may or may not want to be more delicate in the way you smooth down the surface. To find the placement of our new holes that we will be drilling, we want to make sure the bridge will be mounted at the right place. Insert the new bridge in place. Taking scrap strings, thread both east strings through the first and sixth hole and wind them onto the tuners until they are not loose. Once this is all in place, move around the bridge until the east strings are evenly spaced along the neck. Mark the holes once you've found the right spot. To drill the holes, we recommend using a drill press. We have some friends down the road with a wood shop that were able to help us out. We laid down the towel to make sure the body didn't slide around. Then we started to drill the holes by using a brad point drill bit and drilling just a little bit to make sure the drill doesn't lose its target. You can hammer the tip of a screwdriver or a nail just to make the dent in the middle of the mark. If you don't have a drill press available, you could use a hand drill. But make sure that it has a level on the back end so that you can make sure that you are drilling into the wood at a 90 degree angle. If you do not drill the holes straight, the mounting screws will bind up and the whole bridge system may not play effectively. 
Before you start drilling, we need to make sure we drill just enough depth for the screw. To demonstrate, we have here our hand drill, and we hold up the fender mounting screw with the ends aligned. Use tape to mark the drill bit just below the head of the screw. Now we can drill our holes at the right depth. Once the holes are drilled, insert the bridge in place and drill in the mounting screws. Do not screw down the screws all the way. Make sure to leave just enough so the bridge can rock as we are showing here in the clip. Next, we reinstalled springs. From this point on, you're going to be flipping over the guitar a lot to get the right setup and balance that is right for your playing and string gauge. In our case, we like heavy strings, so we will be using all of the springs. With lighter strings, you may use only three springs. Place them evenly or all centered to the middle of the claw. Put the straight edge of the spring into the hole of the bottom of the bridge, holding that end down with your finger. You then place the looped end onto the claw. Now we string the guitar. Again, we are using heavy strings with a bullet end. This type of end is made especially for these type of bridges. Feed all of the strings through the bottom of the bridge and up through the middle of the saddle. Feed the strings over the groove of the nut, then under the string retainer in our case, then through the hole of the tuning peg. We use a standard peg winder to help the process along. Hold the string down with your index finger while winding the string around the tuning peg to make sure it winds nice and low and evenly. Using our PT10 tuner, we tune all the strings. Now we flip the guitar over and create the tension in the springs. As you can see, the tension from the strings causes the bridge to be lifted up away from the body. We want the spring tension to pull the bridge back down to the body. So screw the claw back in a couple turns at a time until the bridge is lying flat against the body on the other side. If you like to use a whammy in your playing, you may want to leave less tension in the springs. However, a good rule of thumb is to have slightly more tension in the springs than the strings. But experiment with it and see what kind of balance you like. Once you have the spring tension set, tune the strings again. The next step is to adjust the height of the saddles, which is also the way we adjust the action. Take an Allen wrench or a hex key. In this case, we have a one and a half millimeter hex key. You'll find the saddles at all sorts of heights straight from the factory, so you will need to level them out and lower them, as you can see we are doing now. Using the hex key, screw the height adjustments to get the saddles as low as possible without the strings buzzing. Once all the saddles are level, test every fret for buzzing. Then retune the strings again. Lastly, we need to make sure that each note plays in tune. Starting with the E string, we play the open string and get that in tune. Then, we play the octave above or the 12th fret. It's sharp, so we need to lengthen the string. We take a Phillips head screwdriver and turn the screw clockwise so that the saddle moves away from the neck. Do this process for each string. Check out the bridge! Now you're ready to jam out, bro! We sure hope you enjoyed this episode of Ant Hill TV. Be sure to find us on Facebook. We offer exclusive discount codes, promotions, and free prizes to all of our friends.